So what is a ratio? A ratio is really just the comparison of two quantities. So if I say compare, you should think ratio. All right, so if I say compare, you should think ratio, or you should think fraction. All right, so if you can ride 15 miles in 45 minutes, what's your ratio? If you're comparing miles of riding to minutes that you're riding, that would be um, 15 miles per 45 minutes. Okay, and whenever you write per, generally you have like a fraction line there. So um, a proportion is just um, the equality of two ratios. All right, so proportions can be used a lot of times if we know one ratio to solve for some missing quantity. So if we know we can do 15 miles in 45 minutes, then how far can you go in one hour? Well, that's 60 minutes. So if we're using proportions, we've got to make sure we have the same units both times. And we're doing miles on top over a minute. So I'll continually write these kinds of things on the side because it reminds me miles over minutes, miles over minutes. So 15 miles per 45 minutes. How many miles for 60 minutes? Now to solve these, you just cross multiply. Where's my, here we go. You just cross multiply and solve. Okay, so this is our proportion. That is the proportion, you don't have to do anything. In order to solve that, you would cross multiply, so 15 times 60, and that's going to equal 45 times x. So that's 900 equals 45x. Uh, divide both sides by 45, and we get 20 equals x. So you can ride 20 miles in 60 minutes. So here, ratios and proportions. Uh, ratio is just comparison, two numbers by division, so think fraction. All right, this is going to be important in our next unit, too, when we do linear equations, because it's we're going to be comparing two things many times. Um, so you cross-multiply and solve. You may have heard cross-multiply and divide, but it only works sometimes. Cross-multiply and solve is the way I want you guys to be thinking of it, okay? I'll be asking you that next class, too. So here, cross-multiply. We've got 10 times 3, and then 5 times x, or x times 5. So 30 equals 5x, and then divide both sides by 5, and you get 6 equals x. There's your answer. All right, now anytime you're doing these, you've got to make sure that you are multiplying the whole bottom by this whole top, and this whole top by this whole bottom. Since it was just one letter or one number, it didn't really make much difference. But here, we have multiple terms on the bottom. So you have to multiply this whole bottom by this top. So it's really 6 times that whole bottom piece equals 14 times 7. Okay? So now we've got to distribute and solve, just like we did the last unit. 6x minus 18 equals 14 times 7 is 98. So now I'm just doing the steps we would do to solve an equation because we've got an equation set up. So I have 6x equals 116, and I divide by 6. Uh, so 116 over 6 is an even. I'm going to see if it's a even decimal, if it goes in evenly, or if it um, works out to be a fraction. So 116 divided by 6 is 19.3 repeating. And if I want that to be a fraction, I said math, that first option. So enter, enter. So it's either 19.3 uh, uh, repeating or 58 and 3 thirds. Okay, so now we've got this. Now I have something crazy on the top. I gotta do this whole top times that bottom. 
and I got to do this whole top or whole bottom by that whole top. So 2 times n plus 8 equals uh, 7 times n minus 5. And now we just follow the steps that we would normally solve to uh, follow to solve an equation like this. So distribute 2n plus 16 equals 7n minus 35, because I distribute it. Combine like terms, or not combine like terms, get rid of the variables on this side. That gives me a 5n. Get, um, add the 35 to both sides. So I eliminated the variables over here. I eliminated the numbers over here. And that gives me uh, 35 plus 16 is... Um, 51. So we get 51 over 5 is our answer here. And if you plug that into your calculator, you just get a 10.2. Uh, so either one of those is correct. All right, one last example here. n plus 2 times 7 equals 4 times n. So 4n equals 7 times n plus 2. So now I distribute 4n equals 7n plus 14. All right, since I have no numbers over here, I want to eliminate the variable over here. And I get negative 3n equals 14. All right, so divide both sides by negative 3. And that gives me n equals negative 14, uh, yeah, negative 14 over 3. And that would be... Uh, 14 divided by 3, negative 4.6 repeating. All right, so those are some examples. You should be able to do the u tries, which are the same. If you have any questions on any of that, uh, make sure you write it down on the side so you don't forget to ask next class, and I'll see you then.